Hello guys and welcome to this episode of Software Sunday. Now a couple years ago I made a video almost identical to this one where I installed a live installation of Windows 7 to a USB flash drive. Today we're going to be doing nearly the same thing except today I have proper screencasting software, screencasting hardware, a proper camera, and I'm also going to cut the crap. I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we are installing a live installation of Windows 10 to a USB flash drive. Now first off this approach is going to work with pretty much any USB storage device greater than 16 gigabytes in size. You could use a USB flash drive, USB hard drive, etc, etc. Secondly, this approach only works with Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10. And the process across all three operating systems is pretty much identical. So what I do for Windows 10 can also be applied to Windows 8 and Windows 7. So let's hop over to the screencast and get a live installation of Windows 10 up and running on this USB flash drive. And then to prove that it is actually working, I will plug it into this IBM slash Lenovo T60 uh, and actually boot the live installation of Windows 10 off this USB flash drive. The first thing we need to do is grab the latest version of Win2 USB. Open your web browser and Google Win2 USB. Click on the link to the Easy UEFI site and click on the download link. Alternatively, you can find the link to the Easy UEFI site in the description. Run the installer executable and click your way through all of the prompts. For this tutorial, I'm just going to leave everything set to their defaults. Before you can create a live Windows install using Win2 USB, you need to first download an ISO file of the OS you wish to install on your USB storage device. For Windows 10, Normally this is done by using the media creation tool to generate an ISO file. Unfortunately though, the free version of Win2 USB does not support installing the latest build of Windows 10, which at the moment is 1809. Now to get around this, we need to hunt down an older build and to make things even more fun, Microsoft does not host a public facing archive of all their older builds. I was able to track down a site listed on Stack Exchange that hosts builds of older ISOs. Now, I can't guarantee that these ISOs are clean, so please proceed with caution. However, the 1703 build that I selected does work with Win2 USB. I will put the link to the Stack Exchange thread with the link to the site that actually provides the ISOs in the description. After you have your ISO file, you can begin the Win2 USB installation process. Open Win2 USB and select the ISO option to the top left. Open the Image File Explorer and navigate to the Windows ISO file you just downloaded and double click on it. As a side note, Win2 USB can also create portable USB installations from Windows images, on CDs slash DVDs, or your system's current Windows install. However, we are not going to look at those in this tutorial. After you select your ISO file, Win2 USB will ask you to select a partition scheme. Since we are using an older ThinkPad as the demo system for this video, I'm going to select MBR for BIOS. Following the formatting process, you will arrive at the partition page. Make sure your boot partition and system partitions are the same, set the installation mode to VHD, and click Next. This will begin the installation process. Now please be patient. Depending on the speed of your USB device, it can take over an hour for the installation to complete. Following a successful installation, eject your USB device and plug it into the computer you wish to boot the live Windows install on. Turn on your computer and enter the boot menu. Depending on your system, the process to get into your boot menu might differ from what I'm doing here. I can access my ThinkPad's boot menu by pressing F12 repeatedly at the boot screen. Once you're in the boot menu, select to boot from your USB storage device. Do realize though, not all systems support booting from USB. Now, if your machine was built in the last 10 years, chances are it probably does. Um, but if it turns out it does not, don't worry, you're not out of luck yet. There is something you can use to boot from a USB device if your system does not support booting from a USB device, and that is called the PLOP bootloader. That is P-L-O-P bootloader. And if it still exists, I will put the link to it down in the description, uh, but that's not something I'm gonna show you guys how to use because once again, uh, not part of this tutorial. And that's pretty much it. This works almost identically to a normal install of Windows now. Just go through the uh, Windows install prompts and you will arrive at the Windows desktop. Um, in my case, things are very, very, very slow. It probably took me 30 minutes just to set everything up because uh, the flash storage I'm using is sluggish and I'm going through USB 2.0 on an old laptop. 
Um, so yeah, there's a pretty significant bottleneck there, but it does work. Uh, if you have faster flash media or even a, a solid state drive in a drive enclosure, um, you should have a much better experience. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If all you want to do is install Windows to a USB storage device, then you can leave right now. I do have one quick tip though. So sometimes I can get Windows to run on the machine, but I can't get Windows to install on the machine. Now, I know that sounds weird, um, but it does happen. So what I'll do is I'll use Win2 USB to install Windows onto a solid state drive in a USB drive enclosure. And then I'll pull that solid state drive out of the drive enclosure, plug it into the system SATA ports, and then boot off the drive. And that drive is bootable through SATA. So I just thought that would be something you guys found neat. That's something I usually only do as a last resort. That's going to be about it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, you can support us by checking out my Amazon and eBay affiliate links down in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.